Well, what's going on everybody? So this video is going to serve a couple of purposes. One, I want to show you our center punch pickups. We've not done a demo on these in a very, very long time, so we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about the Jersey Shore Guitar Garage uh, wiring harness that we have put into this particular Les Paul. And just to give you a kind of little rundown on playing this Stratosphere build over the last few days, I really, really like this guitar. So let's get right into it. Neck pickup. together. Now on this guitar we have two different middle position, three actually, different middle positions we can talk about. So here is your regular parallel middle position, what I just played. Now, if we pull on, let's see, this tone knob right here, this is gonna give us both pickups in series. Cuts the highs out a little bit, boosts everything. There's a lot there, it's pretty cool. Now if we pull on this tone knob, this is gonna give us our out of phase. So this gives us that little quack. So three different middle positions. Now if we go back to our neck pickup, uh, that's a Jimmy Page wire and harness, pretty cool. Um, we also have coil splits on both of the pickups. Personally, on this guitar, the neck pickup is the more useful to me. So let's talk specifically about this neck pickup. We're using center punch pickups in this guitar. We did this on purpose because our center punch pickups are wound in such a way so that we don't have any weird circuitry going on, nothing, it's just the pickup and it's all done internally, there's no resistors, there's no capacitors or anything, but as you're going to see, there's also no volume drop when you coil split this thing, and it sounds like an actual single coil pickup because of the way we've wound it internally. So here is your neck pickup, center punch pickup, humbucker, before we split it. Let's split that pickup. Hear that nice big low end, like... No volume difference really, just a tonal change.
pretty sweet, huh? Now here is the bridge pickup done the same way. Now this is gonna sound kind of thin, a little bit like a telly. I personally don't think it's I personally don't think it's as useful on a Les Paul, but if you put that pickup in a, let's say a Telecaster, like a single single hum Stratocaster or Telecaster, it works unbelievable in that setting. Personally, on a dual humbucker guitar, I like to put that with a coil split in the neck position, and then on a single single hum sort of setup, I like to put it in the bridge position and flip it around. It's really, really sweet stuff. Here, let's put some, uh, Kind of fun, huh? This guitar is really, really cool. Um, so, Center Punch Humbuckers by Dylan Talks Tone, made to coil split. Made to coil split. Super fun stuff. Um, you can r run them, obviously, not coil split. What I really like about these pickups is the clarity and kind of the wide ranging versatility that you can have with them. Uh, you put that together with this Stratosphere built Les Paul um, that we put together. I'm really, really digging this setup, and then the Jersey Shore Guitar Garage wiring harness. Um, what a fun, what a fun thing, man. What a fun guitar. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, either the pickups themselves at Dylan Talks Tone or Jersey Shore Guitar Garage for the wiring harness, we'll put it below. Uh, also, if you go to stratosphere.com or any other website for that matter and see that you want to build something um, and put something together, let me know because we can put a little kit together. When I say kit, I don't mean like kit guitar, like a bunch of junk parts. What I mean is, let's put this together, uh, if you're interested in doing something like this, with quality parts, something you can be really proud of, but option it out in a way that, uh, you know, that you can afford and it's doable for you. I think it's really cool. This guitar right here, um, you know, it's a real Gibson Les Paul that's been modded up. Uh, I mean, for a thousand bucks, like what, what could you want more than that? It's really killer. And if you wanted to do uh, one of those... You know, you know, like a traditional or a, any of the other models that you see on the internet anywhere that come that are just bare like that, let me know. I'd love to help you build them up. Super fun. And like I said, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, we'll put the links below. My name is Dylan. This is Dylan Talks Tone. I just wanted to share the quick tour of the Gibson Les Paul, we called it the Less Than Paul build uh, that we bought from Stratosphere. I think we should do another one. What do you want to see me build next? If we were to buy another one of these, what would you want to see? SG, Firebird, another Les Paul. I don't know. It'd be super fun. Uh, check out Jersey Shore Guitar Garage, like I said, and Dylan Tuck's Tone. I hope you all have a great day. I tell you what, let's go through some viewer comments from the last couple videos about this because there's been a lot of interesting stuff uh, said in the comments. So let's do that right now. All right, let's go over viewer comments. This has been a fun one since we started this guitar project. There's been a lot of things this way and that way and even some angry people. Keep it positive in the comments. Keep it positive in the comments. Let's try to do that. Uh, let's see. 
Brian Saunders says, another thing to consider when looking at price, talking about this Les Paul build, if you'd bought the guitar and upgraded it, how much your of your initial cost was a waste due to leftover parts that you'll never use? This is a really valid point. When buying a guitar like this with bare with no parts in it, um, some parts you can resell, right? Like, uh, you know, like pickups and stuff. But there's going to be a lot of stuff in a less expensive guitar that you won't resell. You know, I've got loaded pickguards from Squires, and I've got, you know, all kinds of stuff. Like... To old tuners laying around in a bag, you know what I mean? You can't really sell that stuff. Maybe I could, I guess, but it's not worth that much money. So it's almost like you're buying everything twice. So, valid point, Brian. <laughs> Blake Jones says, Did you guys buy up all the $500 Les Pauls? They only have Firebirds for 600 bucks. I only bought the one guitar. However, I will tell you that I got an, a message from stratosphereparts.com. It's not, I keep saying it wrong. Um, but we'll put the proper link in the description below, and I tagged it a couple times in this video so that it's correct. Um, they were like, thank you for the video. They've been selling some stuff, for sure. Uh, let's see. AM says, I liked the video, the information and opinions that you gave, but today spending so much for a Les Paul style guitar, I think is worthless, and that is why the company went bankrupt. I think that kits are less expensive. Well, anybody can buy a kit from Asia and build it very cheaply. Um, in fact, we got into a pretty spirited debate with a guy who builds guitars in the Philippines about cost. But cost is kind of irrelevant when it comes to guitars. And I know that people are going to jump through the internet and say uh, differently, but it's a choice. You can buy a less expensive guitar or you can buy a more expensive guitar based on what your budget is and the funds that you have available for it. And I think that uh, judging somebody else or judging what the market should do based on your own personal budget and what you can do or what you are willing to do um, is not fair. You know, um, my wife and I were talking about this this morning. There are particular pieces of gear like cameras, even heck, underwear that are expensive that I'm sure are great. But they're not worth it to me to spend the money. So am I going to get on the internet and talk trash or talk down on a company because they sell a $40 pair of underwear that I don't think is worth it to me? No, I'm not going to do that because they have an audience that appreciates what they do and they're willing to pay the money. I don't think it's fair to like talk trash based on my personal budget or based on what I think is important or what I'm willing to put into something. So I kind of disagree with this comment, and I would encourage those of you that think that way uh, to kind of to look at it from that perspective a little bit differently, maybe just uh, being a little bit more positive with it that way, because every, you know, what is that? There's a saying like in cars and motorcycles and stuff, like there's an ass for every seat, right? Well, maybe, maybe that guitar is not for you. Um, and if it's more expensive than what you're willing to put into it, then just choose a different guitar. It's no big deal. Somebody else will probably buy it. Obviously, they sold out of them. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, just think about that. Pretty cool. Thanks for hanging out with me. This is a really cool video. Please put in the comments below what you want me to build next, and let me know what you thought of this video. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Share this with your friends. This has been really, really fun. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll talk to you soon.